We talk TV. Do you talk some TV? Why, yes, I love TV. Nice nipples. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, we're going to take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Mojo, the single release version, I guess, or deluxe, I, something, I don't know, it's Mojo. This was offered earlier this year in a, a con exclusive type pack with Longshot and Dazzler and an itty bitty Wolverine. This just popped up out of the blue in the past few weeks, and at first, Initial pictures, you know how that goes. Oh my God, where's the paint? It's just plastic. But then as more and more trickled out, we got a better look at it, that it was toned down a bit. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to give that a test drive. Now it initially hit Target, and I guess you could still find it on the shelves right now for $41.99 or something like that. I got mine from Amazon for about $55. So you're gonna have to either hunt it down or wait and see looking at the box you just get a big old digital render of mojo with some comic art behind it mojo 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 warning small parts <laughs> not if this picture has anything to do with small parts there are no small parts on, that. on the side more comic art reference for mojo on the back hey more mojo bio if you want to read that attention petite pieces on the other side there's another picture of the render on top the x logo i got this from amazon but it looked like somebody got crazy with the box knife opening the case that's okay this is just the trash around my plastic on the bottom figure and three accessories another warning small parts just in case you missed it the first two times legalese barcode anyway Let's get this open, see what's going on here. It's heavy, heavier than I'm used to when it comes to a Marvel Legends box, you know? Right off the bat, huh? Just hit me with stuff. I can see the tail right there. I can't get it to slide out. Open the other side, see what happens. Give me the damn toy! Okay. <laughs> that thing was packed in there. All right, we have some heads, hands, hoses, upper torso and arms. Okay have the base with all the arms or tentacles attached which is good because i thought maybe we'd have to plug them all in and figure out which direction they went and which goes where and forward and back and <sighs> seemed like a lot of work and straightening all these out there is a direction if you turn the arm or leg or whatever the hell it is this way you can't bend the leg down it only bends one way so you have to twist them at the platform around and down and there you go and even then it may be backwards i don't know if i did that or if it came out like that but you can see that this one is meant to go this way but this one's backwards so you gotta rotate around get it into position and come down with it have the back of the chair and then the main body which is a squishy material that's it's a little bit off-putting but neat at the same time <laughs> pretty easy to line up there's a bigger peg in the front smaller in the back smaller and bigger peg holes before i snap it together the articulation there is a dumbbell in the middle and it is square so you have to kind of line it up and then bring it around i guess i'll go ahead and do that too pop that on okay that was a bear to get on there this goes there that goes there that goes there i stabbed the, one of these teeth underneath see right there i went underneath it you need to go on the outside of it oh okay there was a snap looks like these hoses plug into oh well no yeah there's an angle end and a straight end and i'm pretty sure that the angle plugs into the chair and then the straight end plugs into the arm socket and there it is mojo big nasty bastard even makes annoying sounds now, before we get into fine tooth combing this thing, I, the question on my mind, and I'm sure a lot of other people's, is what exactly is different between this release and the convention exclusive release? Now, obviously, I don't have that other one in hand, but I did see it at San Diego Comic Con and I took pictures. The biggest difference is obviously the skin tone. This is more washed out, way more pale, and it's taken the spots away. But there's more to it than that. There is still red and blues on the screen scorpion tail the stinger side and then there is red and blue here on the front and on these buttons and then around back there's some blue and then some red and blue right here if you look close at the picture from san diego comic-con the exclusive also has red and blue up in the wires going out of the back of the head and then again right here on the chair so the exclusive definitely has more paint apps than this but that's not to say there's no paint here it, it, don't get me wrong it is subtle 
but there's a little. There's some shading. Like the pink highlights here on the arm and coming up over the hand. Under the folds here, going down to where it attaches to the chair, there's a pink spray. Under the arm, under the chins, just to shadow it up a bit, I guess. It's still a natural feeling color, or well, it's kind of oddball alien but it works well against the yellow. There's this nice wired sculpting detail on the back of the torso, and that just works right into the chair details going up and over, and then like we were just talking about the hair, well, wires, hair, whatever that is, looking like it attaches back in here somewhere, like he's plugged into the matrix, which actually makes sense now that you think about it with the whole Mojo World thing going on. Kind of a metallic plastic used for the tail, but that is not moving at all. <laughs> I thought it was flexy. You try to shift it, you're either gonna pop it off here, pop the back off the chair. But then like I mentioned, some reds and some blues up here in the stinger part of it. it. Has these long blades that are soft plastic. The back of the chair has more of that flowing wire hair attachment stuff, whatever it is. It almost looks like, well, I guess that's what they were going for, huh? this coming back and through into here. Have some more sculpted detail down here at the bottom on the back, some red lights. This meter of some kind, maybe this is, oh, time to change the bedpan. <laughs> Fool. And then maybe these are exhaust ports. They're placed <laughs> like they would be. Some vents on the side, again, blue paint, making those stand out a bit. Some more just random sculpted detail around where the legs attach in. I think the thing that stands out, I mean, I've been joking about it since we first saw it, is this, switch on the front. Apparently this is the on position. On the bottom, lots more of that wire detail, asymmetric. These bulbs down here, at this point, I think we all know what those are. They're not Christmas lights. They don't light up. Those are to make it look like the legs are actually holding the platform up, but they're not. In fact, if you had to rely on these, it probably wouldn't work. They'd buckle under its own weight. It's not a perfect effect. You can still see them down there, but the it's not bad at all. Maybe you could call it anti-gravity columns or something. Like I mentioned, there's these hoses running from here into the arms, and then there's this extra wire coming over here. Pacemaker, keep the old ticker going. Then there's this. Look at those eyes peering out of there. The wires to keep the smile going, to keep the eyes open, to watch as much TV as possible. Gnarly teeth. Blah. It's just a great design, and it's awesome to see it in plastic form again. Since this is not your average humanoid form, really, there's 24 points of articulation, depending on how you count them. So that's some cool engineering, but again, based on this design, there may be a dumbbell joint under that neck, but because of how smooth it is against the torso and that hair coming back, we are not getting a lot of movement out of that. It's just boop, 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 boop. On top of it being tight as hell, I had to push to get that on there. So I'm not looking forward to trying out the alternate head here in a minute. Also these, not as flexy as they seem, and it plugs in here, plugs in here. You get crazy with the articulation, things are gonna come unplugged. You're gonna pick a pose, get it into position, then go back to plugging away. I'm gonna take those off to show you all the articulation. Again, talking about the neck, there is a dumbbell, but you're not gonna get much out of it. Most of the movement is in the dumbbell at the mid torso. Get some back, which exposes here, so you're not gonna wanna go too far. Hand come forward a bit, some tilt, some turn. Pin coming out to the shoulder allows it to go all the way around. Hinge outside of that comes up. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes up, oh, all the way. What was me? Swivel at the wrist, hinges in and out. All these, there is a swivel where you can turn them back and forth. Hinge up and down. Swivel and hinge and swivel and hinge. And imagine that seven more times. and. I guess that's it. Oh wait, there is a ball joint up here where you can get some movement and turn. For accessories, there are two wide open clawing hands. Pretty easy to pull out. There's an alternate pointing right hand and a grip left hand. And like I said a minute ago, the thing I was dreading, there is an alternate head. It's a big, hearty, laughing face with a tongue sticking out. The cool thing about that the tongue is a separate piece plugged into the back. Hmm, do I like this better? Let's try, to, oh, okay. It pulled off without me having to take it off the base, but this part, trying to get this ball joint onto here, I think the best way to do it is to take the body off the base and try to get it lined up and shove with all your might. It feels weird because, again, the squishy midsection, it, it, 
it throws you off or it throws me off whichever let's go ahead and plug these back in just to be complete mojo is about six and a quarter to the top of his actual head or well up here to the hair and then almost nine up to the top of the tail thing and then i have the legs in a pretty neutral position side to side it's well about nine inches there too front to back well again it's about nine inches at least how i have the hands out to here and the tail back to here which is quite a bit bigger than the toy biz build a figure mojo and that makes me happy even when this was released i was like that's too small but you will notice quite a paint app difference look how gross and nasty this is so comparing in the paint department this does come off plain but an argument could be made that this is comic accurate it so's this so's the exclusive version it's comic books different artists different colorists it just all depends on what you're looking for because for me I've been waiting for a bigger version to go with characters like Dazzler and Shatterstar. Nope, I can't find my Toy Biz Longshot or Spiral, so these will have to do. But in my mind, this is what I think of when I think of Mojo compared to regular characters. Just the size, the... <sighs> then here he is next to your more standard bases like Wolverine and Cyclops. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty damn happy. But now the hard decision. I still have the con exclusive version on pre-order. Again, that comes with Longshot, it comes with Dazzler, it comes with the Exiles kind of baby Wolverine, but now I have this. And Longshot's coming on a retro card. So it comes down to Dazzler. And I love that version of Dazzler, damn it. There's slight differences between the long shots and then the paints between the two mojos. I think what I'm gonna do, because I'm down to just buying X-Men and super classic characters in Marvel Legends, I'm gonna keep that pre-order, get it, decide which one I like better, and then take the other one and paint it up like the Toy Biz one, just for giggles. Yeah, that's a lot of money just to be customizing, but that's what I like. That's what I do. That's what I enjoy. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. When it comes to that decision, for you to spend the money or, or pick which one you want it that's all on you i can't tell you what to do but when it comes to mojo itself and figure wise it's pretty damn nice there's limitations because of the design but hasbro did the best with what they had i mean the legs around the base did not have to go that hard but they did if you enjoyed this overview comment like subscribe much much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel patreon.com or wherever you may be watching this i'll always catch you on the foosh oh something i just thought of putting them on a shelf Oh, you're gonna need a deep shelf. Well, I guess the front can hang off a little as long as this is touching the shelf itself. But then this back here is kicking off the wall. If you have shelves like him, I have wall shelves. So I'm thinking that's just pushing. I'm gonna have to come up with a desk display or a deeper shelf or something.